Hi, welcome. How you doing there? My name is Willie. At least it is on social media platforms, but my real name is Sophia. Yeah, Sophie, Soph, Willie, Sophia, any of those names will do, really. Um, anyways, today I'm going to be showing you how to draw your own poster! Yay! Woo! This is also the first video where I'm talking, if you haven't noticed already. Um, so yay, woo, hooray for that too! Haha! <laughs> Yeah, anyways, let's get into it. Okay, so when I typed in how to make your own poster on YouTube, what I got was how to make posters, but in a more graphic design kind of way. And I thought that was pretty lame, but it also means that I have no competition. So that's pretty neat. Also, when I did a poll on Instagram, that one was the most popular. Um, all right, let's jump in. Step one inspiration and ideas so usually if you're working with a client they'll already have something specific in mind like oh uh, well i want a psychedelic 70s theme poster or i want a frog in it like for this poster here the client told me the event was at a coffee shop that he wanted a frog in the poster and to make it cozy so i drew up a little frog in a coffee cup sometimes the client will even have an outline drawn up for you at least in my experience and if they do it makes it a heck of a whole lot easier on you but if they really don't know what they want then ask them questions about the event like does the event have a theme is it for a band what kind of music are they playing where's it taking place is it gonna be spooky wooky or silly nilly what's the vibe once you've gotten some answers you can start gathering ideas and reference pictures and if you're still struggling with inspiration then of course the best inspiration for posters is to look at other posters seriously just type in 90s band posters or 80s band posters or type in the name of your favorite band and then add poster at the end and i guarantee that you'll have an idea for something uh step two rough draft now that you've gathered ideas it's probably pretty obvious, but yeah, you gotta have a rough draft. It's the most important thing to have, especially if you're working with a client, because not only is it your guide, but it's what you're going to be showing your client before you get to move on to the real sexy stuff, like line art, ooh, and coloring, whoa, and rendering, oh yeah. So for example, the frog poster that I mentioned, when I showed him the rough draft, he said he wanted the frog to be a bit more realistic, so I looked up a reference and made the according adjustments. It's also good to do this in case you spell something wrong. I wouldn't know anything about that. Never had to go back and correct the main title or anything. Haha. <laughs> okay, but you will have to go back and tweak the letter sometimes anyways because the event organizer will call you up and be like, Hey, so, um, turns out we have two bands that dropped out. Then you'll have to move shit around. <laughs> That's just life, though. When organizing an event, you'll have people that will drop out. But the good thing is that we live in the 21st century, brother. We have the cool technology. So making adjustments is pretty easy. I don't know. I tend to stay positive. Of course, if you're not working with a client and you're confident enough in your skills, then maybe there's no need for a rough draft. If that's the case, then yeah. Feel free to raw dog it, man. For my rough drafts, I usually draw them in a light blue so then it's easier to go over it when I do line art. Of course, it doesn't have to be light blue. Any color will do, really. Plus, you can always turn down the opacity even if you're working with a darker color. But yeah, just personal preference. But what about poster placement? Where do I put the letters and drawings? How do I make it all fit? Dude, don't worry. I got you. Step three, poster placement. Hey, Here's two super basic poster outlines that will always work. The first one is having a main focus in the middle of the poster. So putting your drawing right in the middle, or you could also put it slightly to the side. The point is that you have some sort of centerpiece. The second poster outline is the opposite of the first. So having the letters be the centerpiece and then having drawings around that. Because sometimes it's just too many names and events, man. If if you actually take a quick gander at event posters, you'll notice that these outlines are pretty common. You could have a really complex poster with perspective and all that jazz, but these outlines are common for a reason. 
They're simple and easy to read, whereas if you were to have a more complicated poster, it wouldn't be as legible. But hey, if simple ain't your style, that's fine. There's lots of complicated posters out there and people will still read them. Like if you look at flyers from the 70s and 60s, they're not super legible. You can't really make out the words at first glance, but people still went to the shows. Even modern day posters can be hard to read. They're not that complex, but the letters are really small because they have to fit each band name or each event. Me personally, I like to make my posters simple and easy to read for the most part because like I just mentioned, sometimes you gotta fit in so many names. But we got that cool technology, remember? People can always zoom in to read it if it's online or they can just get really up close to it if you decided to post it around town. Uh, okay. So choosing colors. I don't really think this needs to be a whole step. It's more like an honorable mention, um, a note, I guess, on choosing colors for your poster. <laughs> because I feel that choosing colors is something that's more intuitive. Like I said, I don't like to make my posters too complicated, so I tend to just choose three to four colors. It really depends on what you're going for, though. There's some posters that don't even have color and look really good as is, so really feel free to do as you please. If this whole choosing colors bit doesn't satisfy you, though, and you're like, what do you mean I just do whatever? God, colors are weird! Like, if you're struggling with color theory in general, then I would look up some videos about it. Or if that's something that you'd like me to make a video about, let me know. I think I could give a brief explanation on the basics of color. I consider myself to be somewhat of an artiste, you know? Alrighty. Well, that wraps this whole video up. Stay tuned for more tutorials and fun vids like these. If you have any more questions on making posters or art in general, then please, oh please, leave a comment below so my eyes can gobble up your words. And if you or anybody else is in need of a poster, then commission me. I've got a whole post on Instagram about it pinned to my profile for your convenience. Or maybe now, you know, you can make your own and you don't need me and that's totally fine too <laughs> i also make comics so go and check that out um as well anyways until next time beautiful people woo